Hello there. Right, I'm knocking these out um, fast and furious. Um, right. I'm going to do three of my thoughts now um, because I don't really know much about any of these really, but it's just my thoughts on this particular topic. Um, so we've got Gene, Steve P and Sandy Moth. Gene says, bro, what's your thoughts on I ideologies such as Islam? Um, I don't think a great deal about it. Absolutely not. Um, I tell you what, m one of my thoughts is it's a real shame. Uh, I, I'm, I don't follow like organized religions and what have you um and we know what islam is we know well, we should do and we know what all that's about the shame about islam is what is somebody doing some gardening or diy what is the first thing that comes to mind to a lot of people when you say islam it's terrorism it's a man with a beard a long beard not me um a darker beard um, with, with bombs, it's hatred. It's um, it's hurting people. It's damage. It's it's war. It's terrorism. That's one of the first things that people would think of, really. Um, but the um, the religion Islam is a peaceful religion. I know they've got some odd ways and what have you, but it's a peaceful, mostly peaceful religion. So. Um, if you accept it for that, because if you accept Catholics or Christians or whatever, then you've got to accept everything, you know, and people are free to choose whatever they want to believe in. And if they want to believe in whatever Islam teaches their people, then that's fine. The, the whole thing about Islam is it is confused with one thing and another. And what I mean by that is Islam is a set of people following a religion it's not a political party and I think that's in people's minds a lot of people um, I mean Islam the religion Islam I think is is it the biggest or the second biggest in the world it's huge so really Gene I don't know anything much about Islam because I don't follow it um, but I think a lot of people are misguided in their minds as to what Islam is uh, Sandy Moth uh, wants my thoughts on out-of-body experiences. Um, out-of-body experiences. You could call it lucid dreaming or you could call it astral plane. That's um, what I used to call it years ago, astral plane. For me personally, um, I've had a couple of experiences where I have felt like I haven't been in my body, whether I have been or what, I don't know. Um, one of them was a long time ago. I was on LSD and all the rest of it, you know, my wayward ways, but I was. Um, and it was incredible that I could see my home from above. And I, then I could see the street from above and I could move up the street and stuff like that very very strange um i don't know what all that was about but it was just that was that situation um and another one was after i'd been ill um years and years ago i had an illness that went on for a while um and i managed to get rid of that or it started to leave me and what have you um for a very long period many months during that time, I used to meditate, but I used to meditate for a really, really long time because I couldn't do a lot else. I was quite poorly and I used to just sit around. Um, but I used to meditate for quite a long time. And just once, one evening, like on a Saturday evening or whenever it was, I'd been meditating for two, three, four hours, something like that. And I didn't know if I was alive or dead, didn't know. Uh, I wasn't, certainly wasn't in my body as in knowing whether I'm hot or cold, knowing that I'm sat on a cushion, knowing that um, I'm still in pain or I'm not in pain, knowing that I'm breathing. I didn't experience any of that. No breath, no, no touch, no ambient temperatures, nothing. So strange, I felt like I was 
floating above myself. Not far, just, just slightly above myself, just floating and floating. And it was absolutely wonderful, you know. So, again, it's a short one, my thoughts. I know nothing really about it. Um, I, I would say it, it exists because I've experienced it twice. Um, but how to how to go about creating it, who knows? I mean, I've only managed it twice. I don't know if I'd want to do it a third time or not. Maybe I would. Who knows? But uh, interesting thoughts. Steve P, my thoughts on using palm oil. This is a funny one. Um, this really is a funny one because palm oil, we were told a while ago, because we were always told rubbish, we were told it was uh, causing lots of deforestation in, um, in the Amazon, in the rainforest, uh, decimating forests and stuff like that. And we were told that it was between 40 and 60% of forests was going because of palm oil. Now it turns out it's between 2 and 4%, which, okay, that might be high, but the alternatives to palm oil, the first nearest closest one would be soy, which is uh, using something like 10% of forest to create oils and stuff like that. So palm oil actually is the more beneficial one. The only thing I know about palm oil, um, you get a huge, huge quantity of palm oil from a single tree. Um, and I mean buckets, bucket loads, bucket loads. Um, everything that is in a supermarket, not everything, 50%, they reckon, 50% of what's in the supermarket contains palm oil. And in your home, in my home, there's palm oil all over the place in plastics. Um, they use it in soaps and shampoos and uh, washing liquids and things like that. Um, it's in so many foods, so many foods, obviously butters and margarines and things like that and, and cooking fats, excuse me, but it's also in um, biscuits and cereals and it goes on and on and on. It's in so many food, it's about 70 or 80% of food stuffs that, that it's in. Because it's cheap, because each palm, um, one of these trees creates such a wealth. It's, it's, it's a great product, to be honest, you know. It's cheap, it contains no cholesterol and it's actually okay for us to eat. Um, so it's not a bad thing at all. Um, the only bad, <coughs> The only bad thing is, obviously, if you um, damage any of any forest, then it's a bad thing, isn't it? However, we've got to live, you know. There's a lot of stories, the initial stories saying about 40 and 60% of forests were decimated because of this palm oil and all these orangutans were dying and what have you. I don't believe that one bit. I mean, that's just stories. Um... But as I say, if you look at the closest, you know, if we get rid of palm oil, if we stop using palm oil, then we go over to soy. But to get the same amount of palm oil, as I say, it's about two to four percent with um, the, the palm trees. Um, but to get the same amount from soy would be about 10 to 12 percent of forest damage. So that's a huge increase. And the next thing, I can't remember the next thing after that, but that's about 20 percent. So it's the lesser evil palm oil. Apart from that, I don't know a lot about it really. I just believe that we're told so much rubbish all the time. So who's to know really? You know, the fact is in my home, nearly every single product will contain palm oil. In shops, supermarkets, 50% of items will contain palm oil. It's cheap, it's versatile, um, and it's sustainable in a way. When you think that, um, I don't know how long a palm tree would take to grow, but you know, obviously they want to continue to make money. So when the palm trees are used, surely they're creating more, you know, 
growing more palm trees there must be um you know they're not stupid are they so it, it's just the lesser of various evils you know it's cheap it's okay for us so quite good for us i think um and it's so versatile that there isn't really an alternative so yeah, Sandy Magnolia, that was Sandy Moff without a body. Steve P, my thoughts on using palm oil. And Jean, my thoughts on ideologies such as Islam. That's it for today. Bit of a long one there, wasn't it? But thank you for listening. Take care and be well.